All right, what's going on guys? In this video, we'll be using CSS selectors uh, to locate sections of a web page. In the previous video, we used beautiful soups, find methods to locate tags and attributes. But in this video, we'll be using CSS selectors. We'll be doing the same thing, but this time using CSS selectors. CSS selectors are patterns used in CSS to locate sections of an HTML web page. Remember, CSS is a styling language used to format or style HTML tags and elements. So CSS has patterns slash code called CSS selectors that are used to find different parts of a web page. And we're going to use some of these patterns with Beautiful Soup. This is going to be a brief overview of some of the common CSS selectors. An extensive list can be found in the link in the description. And one more thing, we're not going to go into the styling components of CSS, but just the CSS selectors. All right, so let's get started. So uh, this time I've actually written all the code out. So all I have to do is explain everything to you instead of typing and trying to explain. So the first thing we want to do is import requests and from BS4 import beautiful soup. And the page that we're going to be scraping is the page I've used in the earlier videos in the series marketwatch.com uh, request I get marketwatch.com and we're of course going to use the headers uh, user agent and Mozilla 5.0 and then we're going to use soup to to parse the content from the uh, get request so this is stuff I've done in the previous videos um, if you're not familiar with this uh, context please check out the, the earlier videos all right so now that we've uh, creating a soup object, what we're going to do is we're going, we're going to find sections by tag. Now we did the same thing uh, in Beautiful Soup using find or find all, but when dealing with uh, CSS selectors, in this case we use select. So finding tags using uh, CSS selectors is pretty much the same thing as finding tags using the uh, Beautiful Soup find or find all. So in this case, uh, just putting in the tag soup.select and putting the tag you're interested in is going to find all instances of that tag. So it's very similar to the find all method of beautiful soup. So let's just run this. As you can see, uh, it prints out all the paragraphs. So the chief executive of Vanguard. Um, there's a lot of, lot, a lot of different paragraphs from probably all the different articles or or um, from all the text located on that page. All right, so let's just clear this out and, and let's go to the next cell. All right, so this same thing here in this instance or this line cell, in this cell, we're going to find all the instances of div. So clicking this um, pulls out all the instances of div. But remember, we're using uh, soup.select. But in this case, the CSS selector is the same thing as we used in the uh, find all. So the tags are the same. All right, so let's just get to the next one. Now, if you want to find um, all the instances of a tag within a tag, what you have to do is leave a little space in between. So in this case, uh, soup.select is going to pull out all the paragraphs and then pull out all the A's located within the paragraphs. So it's looking for all the paragraphs, and then it's going to pull out all the A's lo located within the paragraphs. So if an A is not located within a paragraph, in this instance, it's not going to be pulled out. So let's just click this, and all right. So there's only a few, one, two, three, about well, five or six um, A tags that are located within a paragraph. All right, so let's just go to the next one. Now, just now we were pulling tags that are located within a tag, but here, if we put a comma, we can search for multiple tags simultaneously. So in this case, P and A are two different tags, and we're going to search for both of them at the same time. All right, so as you can see, first it pulls out all the paragraphs. So P, 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 and now once the paragraphs end, I guess, let me see. I'm assuming the A's are afterwards, but yeah, it seems like the A's are afterwards. So now. It pulled out all the paragraphs first, and now it's pulling out all the uh, A tags. And as you can see, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, both P and A. All right, so let's just um, so let's just get to the next portion. Now, 
we're going to learn how to find sections by class. So earlier we we're just trying to find sections of the web page using tags. But when we use class, uh, it's a little different. CSS selectors usually use a, a, a period before the class name. So in this case, the, uh, the class name is Elemental Options, Element Options. So there's a class name Element Options in the web page. And when using uh, CSS selectors, you always have to put a period before the class name. So soup.select and the class name is Element Options, you put a period uh, before the Element Options, before the name of the class, and, and you'll be able to pull out the, all instances of this class within the web page. So let's see. All right. Okay, so as you can see, this class is actually located within a div. But there seems to be only one instance of this class, but it was successfully able to pull out this class element options. All right, so let's just check the, actually, let me just run this over. And now we're going to check the length. So there should be only one instance. Okay. So now I'm going to teach you how to put out a class which has a space in between its name. So as you can see, uh, element options actually did not have a space in between the name. They had, um, it had this uh, underscore. But if you look at this class, it's uh, latest news and then it has a space and then it, um, then it continues with J scroll and element. So in these cases where there's a space in this, uh, in this tag name, or in this uh, class name, sorry, in this class name, what you need to do is put a period. So wherever there's a space, you want to replace it with the period. Because supposedly, this is actually uh, two different classes. So you have latest name as one class and J scroll element as another class. And the space divides them. So there's actually multiple classes in this instance. So what we do is we put a dot, uh, latest news, a period latest news, and then a period wherever there's a space. So in this, in this uh, class name, there's, there's only one space, so we're only going to utilize one period. So it's dot latest news dot scroll element, and this should um, pull out all instances of this class above. All right, so let's just run this, and as you can see, it's pulling out the class latest news j, uh, j scroll element. So remember, always put this period wherever there's a space. Now, one thing I want you guys to just pay attention to is this uh, UL. So the UL is actually a tag, and if you guys remember my earlier videos, a UL is um, an unordered list. So if you wanted to actually locate something using a tag and a class name, we're also able to do that using CSS selectors. So in this case, we just use a class. However, if there's multiple instances of this class and you want to locate it by tag and class, you can do that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, locate uh, this class using the tag name and the class name. All right, so I'm just going to get uh, clear this output, and I'm going to show you show you guys how to use a tag name and the uh, class name. So here, uh, the tag name is UL, and then the class name is latest news uh, dot j scroll element. Yeah. So all we did was preface this uh, this class name with the tag name. So UL is the tag name, and um, this whole thing is the uh, the class name. So let's just run this. Ah, sorry, this seems to be in raw content. I was, I was wondering why it's not running. Huh. All right. So as you can see, by putting uh, prefacing the class name with the tag name, we're able to combine both elements to uh, discriminate even further. All right. So let's just uh, clear this output. And let's go to the next. So I just want to show you that this is actually the same thing as the uh, find all. So let me just run this actually one more time. And it pulls a UL class, uh, latest news, jscroll element, data track code, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm going to run the uh, find all portion of this. And you're going to see it's the same exact thing. All right. So if I run the uh, soup.findall, it's UL class equals blah, 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 data track code. So same exact thing. So it just depends on what you guys prefer. All right. So the next one. So I'm going to give you a couple more examples of pulling out a, something with the tag and a class. So in this case, we have a section tag and a class name, container, container, most popular, uh, full width template. So this is a pretty long class name. And there's a, a, a few different spaces in between um, a bunch of these words. So remember, we have to fill these spaces with periods. All right. So let's see, soup.select, we have section here which is representing the tag name. Then we have a period, container, 
period container. So remember, whenever wherever there's a space, so there's a space here, we fill it with a period. So there's a, let's see, a section a dot container. So remember, you always start off the classes with the dot or a period. And in this case, so it's dot container is the first class. Then there's another class here, because there's a space. So we put a dot container, the most popular. And there's another dot here. So we put um, another space here, sorry. So we put a period. Uh, full width and there's one more so there's about five different spaces in these class names so we fill them with periods and this should be able to pull out the section it should be able to pull out this section from the uh, HTML content so let's just run this and boom it pulls out everything nicely all right so let's just get to the next part all right so this is just one last example of the same thing we've been doing let me just uh, actually get rid of this empty cell all right, so div class, um, we have a div tag and a class with multiple names, so column, column 12, um, column curated. So in between, of course, wherever there's spaces, we uh, replace it with periods. So in this case, div period call, period call, uh, dash dash 12, call. So there's a few periods um, curated. So this should work as well, and let's just run this. All right, so this, uh, this runs perfectly as well. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this again, clear the output, and now we're going to focus on the next section. So the next section is uh, using ID with tags. So earlier we're combining class names with tags. Um, now we want to combine IDs uh, with tags. So when you combine ID with tags, the code looks a, a little different. CSS selector is going to be a little different. Um, remember, earlier we used uh, classes were represented by a period and the class name. Well, tags are going to be re represented by the hash mark. All right, so let me just run this. Um, we're going to be actually scraping the um, Python requests, the docs, because there were multiple instances of an ID and div or an ID and another tag name. I couldn't really find good ID attributes in the MarketWatch uh, web page, and the ones I did find were a lot of them were embedded in JavaScript. All right, so let's just run this. Uh, it's the URL and headers. So these are just a couple of parameters we're going to put into the uh, request.get. All right, so let's just get the uh, let's just get the get request, and we'll save it into response. You've guys done this uh, multiple times, so should have no problem with this. Okay, now we're going to uh, create a soup object with the response.content. All right. So the first thing I want you to you guys to pay attention to it is this uh, div tag with an ID and class name. So we're gonna focus on the ID. So we're going to try to pull out this div with an ID named advanced usage. So the same thing as we did before, soup.select. Remember, select is for CSS selectors and find all is the methods of uh, beautiful soup. Now, here's the tag. So we we have a tag and we have an ID. So we, we uh, just type in the tag and then we're going to put a little hash mark before we put the, uh, the ID value. So it's div. Hash mark, this hash mark represents an ID, and then we put the ID name or ID value, which is advanced usage in this case. So let's just run this, and it should pull out this section here. All right. And, oops, I ran the wrong thing. So let me just uh, get rid of this. Okay, here we go. I'm supposed to run this cell. All right, so as you can see, it uh, pulls it out very nicely and cleanly. Uh, advanced usage. This is some of the text that's located in the web page. So, all right, I'm going to give you another example of what we just did. In this case, uh, it's the ID is uh, session objects. And uh, once again, it's a div tag. So what we do is we type in div, which is a tag name, and then it's followed by a, a hash mark and the name of the ID or the value of the ID. So soup.select uh, div, which is a tag name, the hash mark followed by the ID name. So that, remember, the hash mark represents the ID and the period represents a class. So let's just run this, and boom, no problem. Pulls out all of the content very nicely, very cleanly. All right, let's see. So I actually have one more example, but you guys probably got the hang of this already. But the last example is request and response objects. Once again, ID, and it seems like ID doesn't have any spaces in between. Any ID I find, it's always connected using these hyphens and there's never any spaces so you guys don't have to worry about that ID is usually just one word so we have div and ID once again so the ID is this long name so we'll have div hash mark and that long name and this should pull out everything 
uh, from this section. All right, so let's just run this. Boom, no problem. Gets everything very nicely and cleanly. All right, so that's a brief overview of uh, CSS selectors. There's actually a lot more CSS selectors. I'm going to put a link in the description if you guys want to play around with all the other CSS selectors. But um, the ones I just introduced are good enough for you to, uh, to pull out the sections you want to pull out. All right, so I think that's it for this video. Um, I will see you guys next time.